In this video, I'll show you how to replace a kitchen sink strainer that doesn't have a lock nut underneath. This type of strainer has a bolt on top instead, which holds it down into the housing underneath. If the bolt is not on too tight, a house key can be used to remove it, place the end of the key into the notches, and turn it counterclockwise. If the bolt is really stuck and hard to get out, try to turn the key with a pair of pliers, and if that doesn't work, a bent metal bar will give a lot more leverage and make it easier to remove. Mine wasn't very tight at all, so I was able to loosen it easily with a house key. If the bolt is really stuck into the housing and hard to turn even once it starts moving, make sure to hold the housing from underneath to prevent it from turning together with a bolt. So here's the bolt. This one's actually in good shape even though it's a little rusty. It's still in one piece, but that's not always the case. Here's another one from a different sink. This one was made of plastic instead of metal, and it just broke apart on its own. So now we can remove the housing from underneath. I'll start by unscrewing the bottom nut on the drain pipe first. Now push the washer up. That will allow the tailpiece to slide down into the drain pipe and make room for the housing to come out. And while holding the housing, unscrew the housing nut. So I don't have enough clearance for the housing to come out. I'm going to push the pipe down a little further and remove the housing and pull the pipe out as well. Make sure to clean any dirt built up under the sink to prevent leaks. Even though my rubber washer is on the top side, it's still important to clean the bottom so that when it's tightened down, the pressure on the washer is distributed evenly. Here's the new strainer assembly. This is the type with a lock nut underneath which should be more durable and easier to install. Make sure to follow the instructions that come with your strainer. On mine, the rubber washer goes in the recess on the top side of the sink and plumber's putty is not required. So let's take the strainer apart and get it ready for installation. I'll start by removing the tailpiece. Make sure not to lose the washer at the top side of the tailpiece and unscrew the lock nut to separate the strainer from the housing. Sometimes the new tailpiece is not long enough, so if the old tailpiece is the same as the new one, the whole piece can be reused. I'm going to use the new tailpiece, so I'll take the washer and nut from the old one, and I'll put them on the new tailpiece, making sure not to flip the washer. It has a flat and tapered side. Before installing it, make sure the washer at the top end is in, and now slide it into the drain pipe, making sure that the washer is tapered towards the bottom. Next, I'll put the new strainer in the sink. I have the rubber washer on this side, as indicated in my instructions. Make sure to follow the instructions for your model when installing it. And now put the housing and lock nut on from underneath. Lift the strainer and put the housing under it. Place the lock nut under the threads. And now I'll turn the strainer clockwise from the top and screw it into the lock nut. I'll hand tighten it first and leave just a little slack for adjustments. Make sure the strainer is perfectly centered in the recess of the sink. And once it's centered, tighten down the lock nut. Next, I'll screw on the tailpiece nut into the strainer. and tighten it down. And the final step is to tighten down the drain pipe nut. So let's give it a test now. I'll turn the water on and check for leaks under the sink. So everything looks good, I don't see any leaks, and I'm gonna double check it over the next few days just to make sure everything is okay. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll be posting more videos in the future. Thanks for watching!